Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Ryan. Today we're going to be talking about how we can measure the center of gravity of our radio controlled airplane by using only a couple simple tools. Now what we want to get away from is holding the airplane on our fingertips to balance it on our fingertips in order to get the center of gravity position. First of all, it's very difficult to predict or estimate exactly where we are holding the airplane when we're using our fingertips. It's not really a precise measurement. The second thing and the only real primary reason why I'm trying to move away from this method and go to something a little more quantifiable is because I placed dents into my radio control airplane. Now, the reason that happened is because I hold the airplane and I had a larger than what is recommended battery in the airplane because I wanted some more flight time and that extra weight actually caused the airplane when I was measuring the center of gravity to dent it. Now that, that bothered me a lot so I looked for an opportunity in order to get rid of that method and adopt something new. So that's what we're going to look at today. It really is fairly simple to do. You only need a couple different instrumentation devices, one of them being scales. Now it's best if you have three scales, this will help you out. However, you really only need two scales and you can get away with this and I can explain that when we get there. The other device that you'll need is a sort of tape measure, something to measure distance. Now in replacement of the tape measure it would be best if you're able to use a cutting board. This is what I use, however I'm going to go and explain how you can do this without the cutting board. You place a cutting board down on the ground and then what you do is you're able to line up your main gear on the certain line within that cutting board and then you can measure from one set of gear to the next. That is what we're going to be doing in this example. So let's go ahead organize our table so we can bring a plane up on it and then I'll see you there. All right, so here's the plane that we're going to be taking the center of gravity measurement uh, with. The first thing that you're going to want to do is prep the airplane so that it is in flight ready condition. This is exactly what you need in order to measure the center of gravity. So we'll start off by first lifting up our canopy uh, from the rear here. Once we have the canopy open, we want to make sure that we have the battery placed in here. So there is a battery placed into this. Uh, jet and it's a 4,000 milliamp hour for anyone who cares. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll snap back our canopy making sure that that battery is all locked into position which it is. Uh, once the canopy is in place that is exactly what we need. Now the reason why we have everything in place is because this is how it's going to fly. This is the exact flying condition of the airplane. Now the second thing that I wanted to do is take a look at our center of gravity measurement. This is if you do not have uh, that cutting board that has all the square grid layout in it. What you can do is you can place a plumb bob so you can see here how I have a piece of string that I'm able to tape to the airplane right at the center of gravity and I placed a small washer at the bottom so it acts as a plumb bob. Now what I can do if I don't have a cutting board is I can take a measurement right from the wheelbase right over to our center of gravity. Now that is going to be the main gear. Now what you can do if you don't have that cutting board again you're going to go and set these wheels right on a mark. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up here on the table exactly how I need it in order to take this measurement. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my scales move them out of the way so I can take that measurement and then while I'm taking the measurement I'm just lining up my tape measure with my base line so this is the line between the two main gear you want to make sure that it is right at the center of the wheel that is where the center of gravity is going to be um, measured from that's going to be your point source there so from the center of the wheels and we're talking about the main gear we have three and three eighths of an inch. So this is matches. This does match what I had before three and three eighths of an inch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that over to an imperial, sorry, a metric value. The calculator uses metric values. So we can take that number converted it over. It's going to be somewhere around in the mid eighties uh, millimeters. And then we're going to go ahead and measure now the full distance from our main gear. Again, I'm using that reference line between the two main gear and I'm going to go right to the center of the nose wheel. So when I go to the center of the nose wheel, I am looking at a measurement of just about 19 and a 16th of an inch. So now I have both of the measurements for this airplane, uh, three and three eighths from the main gear over to my center of gravity point and from the main gear over to my nose, I have about 19 and a 16th of an inch. So now what I want to do is I want to place my scales right at the base of the wheels. This is, you know, this is the sort of method that I use all the time. Uh, when I'm doing this, I take the scales, I line it up right here, make sure I turn them all on. Uh, take your nose 
scale, you want to adjust this in such a way where you can see all the numbers here. Once they've all zeroed out, which I do, um, that one's not perfectly zero, that's okay, I have the numbers already recorded. So I'm going to go ahead and place it up on the scale. Once we have it here, we can take the readings of each scale. You're going to have three different numbers. Take each individual number, the left wheel, the right wheel, and the nose gear. These values you will need. Now, if you don't have a third scale and you only have two scales, what you can do is you can substitute. Find something that is equal to the thickness of the scale here. So I'm going to pull this guy out. What you're going to look for is something that is going to be about this thick if you have a scale like this. Now, you're looking at something like half an inch thick. You can slide it under there in such a way where it's going to make up the difference. And then you'll take your reading on the right wheel, on the right main wheel. Once you've done that, you switch. Put the scale on the left wheel and then move that piece over to this side. Now that's all there is to it when you're taking the measurements in order to get the two distances that we require and then taking the three measurements in terms of the weights per wheel. Now we can head over to the site, the website. That is the other thing that we will need. You do need an internet connection. So I imagine if you're watching this, you also have that. Uh, then we can go ahead, enter all this information into that calculator and go from there. Here we are at the radiocontrolinfo.com website. Uh, this is where you will need to be in order to perform the calculation for the center of gravity of the radio control airplane. Now you will notice on the right hand side of this website, just like we mentioned in the previous video, that there is a shopping cart. I'm hoping to add the tab somewhere along the top as well. And we're expecting to launch this sometime in about two weeks if all goes to plan. Now don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can not miss out on the discount code that we offer. Now let's get started by looking at exactly how we make this calculation for the center of gravity of our airplane. The first thing that we're going to do is hover over the information tab. Then we want to hover over RC airplane calculators and then mouse over to center of gravity calc using scales. We go ahead and click that and then we'll arrive at the page that can calculate the center of gravity for us. Now you'll see that the first bunch of fields will be present where we can go and enter information. We need to enter information in every single one of those fields. If you go ahead and misclick or don't enter information in any of those fields, you're going to get simply output that says please fill in all the fields with values greater than zero. You have to make sure that you do that. Uh, one of the other things that you can see here is that we have these letters here. There's an A and there's a B. This does correspond to a picture located near the bottom. We will also have this video that you're listening to located underneath here as well. What you can do is reference the exact location that is being talked about or reference in the fields above. Our A dimension is going to be from the main gear to our nose gear and the B dimension is from the main gear to our center of gravity. These two dimensions are essentially fixed. You can change the center of gravity however this is sort of dictated to you in the installation instructions of your radio controlled airplane. So this is the exact same airplane that we just looked at. Um, this is what the one that we're going to be basing all of our dimensions off today. Now another thing to note is we do have a bunch of dimensions that we are measuring. It would be great if someone were to go and explain to me or tell me what the dimensions they have for the airplane that they have measured. I can go ahead and create a database that would allow this to be even easier to use in the future. If someone could even confirm the dimensions that I measured here on my plane, that would be awesome as well. So we're going to go ahead and measure all of those values right now. We're going to go and convert them first to our metric equivalency. So I wanted to show this that we have 19 and a 16th of an inch. We can go ahead and enter that in here. So that's a 16th of an inch plus our 19 times 25.4. This is the number you want to use in order to convert the dimension. Inches times 25.4 is going to get you the metric value. So we're going to go ahead and enter the 484 and then we're going to go and look at our 3 eighths plus our 3 inch. So 3 and 3 eighths times 25.4. That's going to give us around 85, 86. So we can go ahead and, and place that in here. First dimension here, 86, and then our 484. Then we go ahead and enter in all of the weights that we measured with the scales. Our first one is at 1204, 1180, and 470. These are the values that we measured. Now the last thing to do is go ahead and calculate uh, what our center of gravity is. So we go ahead, fire that off, we click the submit button, and we end up with a value here that says our plane is tail heavy. 
Our total all up weight, this is nice. It gives you the total weight of the plane at 2854 grams. We get a distance between the required center of gravity and actual center of gravity of six millimeters behind the center of gravity. So we are six millimeters tail heavy. That's what this is saying. We know it's tail heavy, so six millimeters is where we're gonna go at. So if my, I know my plane has a center of gravity around 103 measured from a specific reference point in the manual. I think it's 103, whatever it is, I know it's marked on the plane. I could take that 103, I can add six millimeters to it and I'm actually at 109 millimeters according to the manual. That's what, that's gonna actually fly okay. It's not too far off from where we are, but it's good to know that that's the exact value that we have measured. As long as we're accurate with all dimensions and everything we measure, this is going to tell us where our center of gravity is. Now the other thing that we'll note is the distance of center of gravity from the main gear is 79. We want it at 86. It's at 79. This is where you get the 6 millimeter and the nose weight that we would have to add in order to achieve the correct center of gravity is 45. Now this is simply just an addition of weight. You can go ahead and move things, move components in your airplane to achieve the same result. You can go ahead and move like 25 grams that's in the tail. You can move that over to the front and you're going to get uh, it to balance out as well. Really what we're talking about here is just the amount of nose weight to add. That really does it for the conclusion of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like the video if you do and please subscribe. This way you don't miss out a future video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.